Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, respected audience. Today, my topic of discussion is about persistent epithelial defects and their possible management. This is a 75 years old patient who has undergone multiple uh, glaucoma surgeries and cataract surgeries, and uh, diabetic patient who has developed this persistent epithelial defect. It can be seen in the photograph that uh, there, are, there is corneal scarring persistent epithelial defects which are taking up the stains and there is pseudophagia. This is another photograph of the same patient. Here is well shown that there is a persistent epithelial defect which is taking up the stain and uh, there is a mild, you can say minimal to mild conjunctival congestion, no hypopia, no infiltrates, no AC reaction was there and uh, it was a non-infective case. Another photograph here you can see superiorly and inferiorly there is a not much that conjunctival congestion, conjunctiva is quiet, no signs of infection, and there is uh, you can see the different location view of those epithelial defects. This is a, these are two another anterior segment photographs, slit left. Here you can see. And that there are the two locations where these persistent epithelial defects, which were not healing, the patient presented to the emergency. And uh, you can see the location, their size, their orientation, everything shown in these photographs. Well, if you talk about the corneal anatomy, especially the corneal epithelium, it comprises of the non keratinized squamous epithelium. Then they have the uh, wing cells and after that there are the basal epithelial cells and uh, they are in the continuous uh, process of uh, being made these cells. There is a continuous turnover of the cells, cells are getting destroyed and new cells are being made. It takes usually around about 7 to 10 days and uh, this is the basic source of their proliferation is from the limbal stem cells which are at the corneoscleral junction and they are continuously producing the new cells over there. The most important thing is that if you talk about the superficial layer, the corneal epithelium, that the stratified non-keratinized non epithelium, they have tight interjunctions, there are microvilli over there which are protected by the mucinian layer of the tear film and uh, the main source that the proliferative activity if we say the only layer which is the basal cell epithelium that has got the mitotic activity. So there is a continuous process going on over there in which the uh, cells are being destroyed and their new cells are being produced. So the ultimate thing is that the cornea is avascular area and it maintains its transparency so that the media is clear and the light can pass through it. So there are multiple causes for these uh, persistent epithelial defects which persist over there. They may be because of trauma, they may be because of any foreign bodies, um, some uh, metabolic conditions like diabetic retinopathies, dry eyes, trichiasis, and uh, the patients who have got some uh, eye burns, corneal burns over there, the limbal stem cells have been damaged over there. So there are a number of causes like this in which the uh, but epithelial defects are persisting over there and which are not healing over there. So if you talk about the nervous supply of the cornea, it is supplied by the trigeminal nerve and there is the fine intraepithelial plexus, superficial plexus over there. And these nerves are very important for the normal and healthy uh, presence of the epithelial cells over there is very important and sometimes because of chemical injury, microtrauma or any injury over there, these uh, nerves are got damaged in diabetics or because of any trauma injury. So these patients uh, after the damage of these uh, nerves which are very important for the health of the cornea, they develop a neurotrophic ulcers which also persist discuss about the different phases of uh, corneal epithelial healing there we can divide it into the four phases that is number one is the lag phase number two uh, migratory phase number three is the proliferative phase and number five is the healing phase if we talk about the lag phase this is basically 
a preparatory phase in which the damaged area over there is getting prepared uh, for healing. In this uh, leg phase, uh, that the extracellular matrix over there is being prepared uh, provisionally over there so that cells can come and migrate over there. The second over cell phase, the migratory phase, in which the area which is not damaged, which is a healthy area along the damaged area, the cell starts migrating from there. In this phase, the basal cells also play a very important role. The third phase is the proliferation. The proliferation shapes, we can say the liberal stem cells basically provide these uh, cells over there, proliferating cells. They are the mother cells, stem cells which are coming into the action. And the final stage healing where the strong adhesions develops on the newly laid epithelium uh, so that they become stronger over there and uh, this way the whole process continues. So these are the different phases which occur in the normal healthy cornea. Yes, but in the damaged area because of the earlier reasons, any one cause over there, any link of the chain is uh, damaged, the eye does not heal there is a very perfect uh, we can say the um, equilibrium ma being maintained over there between the cells which are being lost and the new cells which are being prepared as i mentioned usually whole this cycle takes seven to ten days to prepare the new cells so if any link is missed over there so the persistent epithelial defect remain over there as I mentioned, any epithelial defect which in spite of full treatment for two weeks is persisting and there are no signs of infection, nothing like that, uh, can be classified as persistent epithelial defect. A patient comes to us, we make a thorough examination, a history of the patient, since when it is present over there, any comorbidities, uh, dry eyes, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetic patient, he may be having a history of trauma, chemical, mechanical trauma, and uh, any associated uh, features which can uh, contribute it over there, we have to take consider in the history. The second thing is the examination, anterior segment examination starts from the eyelid margins, any discontinuity, any abnormality over there, trichiasis, misdirected eyelashes, tear film, tear film breakup time, tear film height over there. All these things are very important, should be considered while examining patient with the persistent epithelial defect. We should also pay close, atten close attention to the limbal stem cells. Sometimes their deficiency also contributes towards these things. If possible, we should also look towards the uh, posterior pole for us. Any findings over there will all be, will be very helpful. So if we talk about the treatment of the, fear, it, of the patient, it's as per the cause over there. But the most important thing is we have to control and limit the use of preservatives in the eye. We have to go for the preservative free eye drops if possible because these lubricant eye drops will remove the dead desquamated epithelium from the there and they will provide an optimum atmosphere for the new cells to be uh, prepared over there. So they play an important role and you can say in the lag phase. Along with it, uh, we should also continue our antibiotic eye drops, minimal coverage to prevent secondary bacterial infection. The third thing is uh, that uh, if there are severe dry eyes, we can later on think about the temporary punctal occlusion. So these are different steps we should be kept in the mind. If it is persisting since long time, sometimes it is very important to fresh up the margins. We can do superficial keratectomy over there. We can remove any slough, any material over there. And these fresh up margins will have a better chance of healing. So, yes, superficial keratectomy. Uh, with the, uh, manually it can be done along with this superficial keratectomy uh, low dose uh, weak uh, topical steroids uh, if there is inflammation over there they can also be introduced this is very important and the third thing is about the lid margins over there matrix metalloproteinases uh, should be covered with uh, as a doxycycline tetracyclines and uh, Azithromycin, uh, they are basically supportive role in the metano, met, MMX uh, inhibitors. They have a protective role. But we have to maintain an optimum environment, give it a chance to heal. So we have to cover that damage and dead area from the rubbing of the eyelid margins. So we can use uh, that uh, bandage contact lens 
In this category, the scleral contact lenses are a very good option and we can also use the silicon contact lenses so that they maintain an optimum atmosphere over there and there is no rubbing, no damage, mechanical trauma and the area gets a maximum chance to heal. Uh, we can also go for the central partial tarsography. It is very efficient and time tested way to promote the healing. The surgeon can see the condition of the cornea regularly uh, from the side away of the tarsography. The eye drops can be put over there and basically it gives a uh, continuous uh, uh, closure of the eyelids. Along with this autologous serum, 20%, 50%, they are also very efficient, but the problem is that uh, they have to be regularly prepared and they have to be used, but they are very good in promoting the healing. Nowadays, much is talk about the insulin growth factors and platelet drive growth factors. The insulin growth factors are also very good in the healing of these corneal ulcers, especially these uh, diabetic patients. And uh, if we talk about the AMT, AMT, Procara, that can also be used over there surgically or Procara and uh, it has also shown very good results uh, in these patients. So along with this uh, Gunderson flaps, the conjunctival flaps where we cover this area over there, the persistent epithelial defects uh, can also be applied in which the corneal epithelium is not healing and uh, the things are worsening. This is also a traditional conventional way which is, has been done since years and decades. The Nowadays new modalities are coming over there, people are talking, people are doing. Uh, but these can be used in very refractory ca cases because of their cost uh, effectiveness. These are very expensive but still present over there and these are the nerve growth factors. They basically stimulate growth and survival of corneal epithelial cells. They may play a very important role in maintaining the limbal epithelial cells and uh, increase the tear production. And in this uh, category, we have got uh, uh, Seni Germain eye drops and uh, Observate, Observate eye drops. These are basically can be used in very refractory cases. Uh, where the especially in the dry eyes where things are not healing and bursting. So this was a brief description about the persistent epithelial defects uh, which are very tricky and challenging to be managed and uh, but there are different things of, of all these treatment options the surgeon and the physician has to pick up which is the right one option and which stage the patient has presented to the uh, clinic. I hope my this presentation will be beneficial to my respected audience during their clinical practice. Thank you.